Ooh, morning Trainiacs. Just finishing up with 15 minutes, low cadence around 60 RPM, and heart rate right at the top of Z2, zone two. With the team riding together on Zwift. It's what makes it go by so much easier. Of course, it's important to stay motivated because that's what keeps things fun. As long as we're motivated, we're probably enjoying all of our endurance training and that's gonna allow us to push a little bit harder to reach those super, super peak efforts so that we can make gains, whether it's on the race course or just push ourselves into new levels that we didn't think we were capable of to make ourselves more confident in life. Here's the thing though, that our entire industry, whether it's the athletes or the coaches or the people that are putting out content get wrong. They always talk about pushing through motivation. If you want it bad enough, you've got to work hard, rise and grind, getting up at 4 a.m. What they don't talk about is that, yeah, that's important, but having a system that you can use to A, push through those low moments, but B, use that low motivation as a tool for how to guide your training because that's a signal that we have to acknowledge. And if we don't acknowledge it, there's gonna be problems. So I'm going to give you a system for how to push through low motivation instantly and how to recognize when you shouldn't be pushing through that low motivation. Back in 2019, I actually had the luxury of spending a week with Sarah and Ben True while we were filming a course about how to run in triathlon. And one of the things that they talked about was they are both professional athletes. Ben is one of the best runners in America and Sarah has been one of the best triathletes in America. And they said that they tend not to really get involved with each other's training, but what they do monitor in each other is What's their motivation level for getting out the door for the second workout of the day? If they're lazing around and spending time on social media and procrastinating, that's an indication of a little bit of low motivation. In my case, back in 2017, I was just starting to take triathlon a little bit more seriously and the idea was, you know what, this is gonna be the year that I hire a coach and that I take things super duper seriously. And what ended up happening is I got faster over the first several months and then I started getting to that point of feeling like, all right, I've gotta push through training, I've gotta get up and I've gotta be tougher than this train, I've gotta get over it. And it ended up ending at the final end of the year after about 15 months of trying to do this, not being able to push through training and being depressed because I was so injured, I was so ill, I was so sick and not wanting to train whatsoever. I was wondering if I would ever even return to doing triathlon, let alone these videos. Sometimes you need to push through that low motivation to get through a lot of the workouts. I tell you this, Sarah and Ben didn't become the world-class athletes that they are by the second things got tough by going to bed. No, they pushed through some of those workouts. But on the other hand, you also need to recognize when too much is too much. And motivation is one of the first tools that you can use to balance that. So in this video, I am going to tell you the steps that you can take to help keep motivation nice and high, but the steps that you can also take to make sure that you are not overcoming motivation to your own detriment. If you can do both, you're going to be able to make a lot of progress and stay healthy, not just throughout your training, but for the rest of your life. Let's start off first with the fun stuff. And this is the four step process that I like to go through to help keep motivation high. Even over the past year, while I struggled with motivation, I had some of these four things in place that helped keep me fairly regular. The first is to set a scary goal. And it doesn't have to be so insane that like you can't even run 5K now, but you wanna do a 50 mile trail run. What I would recommend is setting a goal that is just a little bit outside of what you think you're capable of doing. A good barometer for this is like, take what you think you're capable of now, and if you think that if you were to do it now, there is literally a 50-50 shot of you being able to complete it or not, that's gonna motivate you every single day to take the next 
few months to make sure that when you worry about your training, getting hard and should you be doing this and oh, maybe I don't want to do this, you're going to have that little bit of fear in your head saying, hey, get off the couch. I think it's probably time to go for a run. The second thing is to structure your training around groups. Studies show in my experience, like you saw with me riding with the team this morning, is that when you ride with people, when you run with people, when you train with people, it's so much easier to get through those difficult times. Especially if those people that you're training with are expecting you to show up at a certain time because the run starts at 8.30 or 5.45 or the swim class starts at 4.30 after work, whatever it is, you feel accountable to those people because you don't want to let them down. This is a really good incentive to help keep you motivated to show up to those workouts. So wherever possible, join groups of like-minded people with similar paces so you can go and execute your workouts while not undoing your workouts while having the help of that group around you to do those workouts. The third thing is to commit to it publicly. If you go and state that you have a certain goal and you tell it to even just one person, we actually did this with NTK. When she first started getting into running, we wrote out a training plan and she was like, oh yeah, that's a pretty nice training plan. I'm gonna try to commit to it. And then I said, here's a trick. Tell a friend that this is the training plan that you're doing and text that friend a picture of the plan that you want to do for the next four weeks with how many as a minimum workouts you want to complete of that plan. We said that to call it a successful four week training plan, she had to complete 80% or more of the workouts and she had to state this to the friend that she texted it to and instantly, boom, she felt accountable to that friend and the friend would check in on her every few days and be like, so where you at? How you doing? And again, that was being accountable to more people. So whether you state it in our training app or on Facebook or just privately to a friend, share what you want to do with somebody so that it becomes all of a sudden real. And then the fourth and final trick is Put something on the line. If you have some sort of a bet with a friend, I can't tell you the amount of stories that we have got from people that say, you know what, I had a bet with a friend and the bet was that we would have to run a half marathon and then now I'm into Ironmans and I love it. A perfect example of this are the friends Kevin and Lauren who we've had on our podcast who do the Instagram page, Our Triathlon Journey. They are accountable to each other. They set goals that are slightly scary to them. They state what they wanna do on social media and to their friends so they're accountable to everyone around them. And I think they have a little bit of a friendly competition going between the two. How though do we make sure that if you set that up and you just slam through motivation that is lagging a little bit, you're not going to become unglued. The guidelines for using low motivation as a tool to understand when you should push a little bit and when you should back off, again, there's four things that I think that you can do. The first thing is to recognize when that low motivation is also paired with actual physical symptoms. And the first physical symptom is like actually taking longer to get out the door for workouts. So this is like the Sarah and Ben True thing where they would look at how long does it take them to get motivated to get out the door for the second workout of the day. If you're feeling like your motivation is low and you're just lying down and you are just wanting a little bit more rest and then you're like, okay, fine, I'll just, I just gotta go do it. I just gotta go do it. Or you're saying things like, well, I just wanna get this race over with. These are indications that your brain is trying to play some tricks on your body to make you rest, to lie down, to do less. And in this case, you should probably listen to it if it's a chronic thing that's happening several days in a row. The second thing is, is this low motivation paired with something that would be an indication of a precursor to overtraining? For example, are you sleeping less than seven and a half hours a night? Are you encountering muscles that are actually sore the next day frequently? Are you very busy at work or with home? And the low motivation is probably an indication that these things are making it less likely that your body is going to be able to recover. So it's a 
first step of your body trying to slow you down, saying, whoa, 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 this is getting to be a little bit too much. So look back at what your life situation is like and if it has these factors that are not conducive to good training, then maybe it's time to back off. Now the third step, if you wanna just step it up a notch and you wanna actually get some data to see if low motivation is low motivation or you are actually physically struggling is to use something like HRV. Now I've talked about Aura Ring and the Whoop Strap in the past or HRV for training, whatever you're using. What I like to do from all of these things that measure HRV is strip out the HRV number. And I'll put a link in the description below to a spreadsheet that you can download for free just put in your email address and what you do is every single day you put in your HRV reading and you end up measuring your seven day HRV, your heart rate variability, the indication of how recovered you are versus your 30 day HRV. And when your seven day dips under your 30 day, that's an indication that what's going on in the previous seven days is a little bit too much. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to learn the difference between low motivation and actual physical struggling. The fourth step is what happens when you decide that it is time to back off. How do you deal with this? Well, forget about what I said at the start with the outsmarting motivation. Don't think that you are going to try to outsmart low motivation because it's like saying you wanna outsmart physical reactions that are occurring in your body. You're not gonna outthink them. First step is that you can lighten off your train. Just bring everything down a little bit and see what happens. Quite often the first thing that happens is that, well, you feel actually worse. This is actually an indication that you need even more rest. Next, take a look at your training balance. Are you following roughly the 80-20, the polarized training method where the vast majority of your training, roughly 70 to 80% of your training is at a low intensity or are you more like a lot of self-guided athletes where upwards of like 60% of your training is at a moderate intensity and your body's just not able to keep up? So you can go and look at something like Garmin Connect or whatever training app you have to see how much time you're spending in each zone. Finally, you might have just done too much too soon. Quite often, endurance athletes will tend to jump into something and then start building up massive amounts of volume and that too much too soon ends up creating a response from the brain like, whoa, 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 stop, because this is way too much. And take a look, have you been building up the amount of hours that you've been doing each week or the amount of training intensity if that's the number that you look at or the amount of time spent in higher intensity heart rates by more than about eight to 10% per week. And if you've been stepping it up by more than that, that's a ramp rate that a lot of bodies just have a tough time with. Again, this is a time to get your training balance right and make sure that your training plan is actually designed properly. I think that motivation, both high motivation and low motivation is such a powerful tool that we are actually designing our training app to help people with all of those aspects of staying motivated while using those indications of low motivation to help tailor their training because I think it gives us such powerful clues about how much is too much and how much we can actually push ourselves. So if you actually want to get a training plan that has all of the right training balance, the right ramp rate. And this is all something that you can get at app.mymotive.com. You can try it free for 14 days. And if you like it, stick around. We got a heck of a group of Trainiacs to stay motivated with. See what I did there? And if you aren't already subscribed Trainiacs, hit the subscribe button below. Stay motivated or rest. Now you know which one's which. Later.